Hello friends. Welcome once again in another session for free faculty. I am Niladri Day, your free faculty. Uh, today we're going to have a look into one demonstrations for learning management system and for assessment as well. And the name of the tool is called Moodle. Now the tool Moodle is free of cost. However, there are multiple tools available which are available online where we can directly sign in sign up and we can start hosting it but the advantage with Moodle is it's completely customizable downside is you have to download Moodle get it configured and during our remote teaching learning environment it is always preferable to have one public IP address to get it hosted so once if I invest a little bit amount in getting a public IP address or I purchase a domain which is once again very very cheap nowadays I can go to big daddy uh, webrock.com or any hosting websites from there I can get a cheaper hosting options and once again Moodle is free of course so I'll not be paying anything for Moodle and the complete platform will be under your control the disadvantage with the other platforms today they are offering it free of cost we never know when they will stop offering it free. So the biggest advantage with Moodle is it's always free and it will be once you download, configure and ho start hosting it, it is lifelong free for you. We have to just keep sharing or paying the money for the hosting, which is once again, very, very cheap. Right, so let's get it started. How do I start using Moodle and how do I configure it? <clears throat> So the two uh, option is I have supposed to go to Moodle.org. There I can go ahead and download the Moodle version, which is latest. A little old end version is also no harm. That is also fine to go ahead with. Once I go to that option, I'll be able to download Moodle. At the same point of time, I should be purchasing one domain and that domain should support a public IP address accessing. By default, every hosting site nowadays offers a Apache MySQL pack, which is exactly what is required for Moodle, and that is also free. Now, for my organization, we are fortunate enough that they have already purchased a domain, and we are calling it vishnuipariksha.com. And on that, we have already downloaded and configured vishnuipariksha. Now, as you can see, already I do have a few couple of courses here. But without getting into those courses, let me take you through very quickly how to create a new course, how to add multiple participants in that, how to handle the participants, basically the complete course administration, then how do you perform your assessments also. Let us take a quick deep drive in that. So on the top right corner, I have an option called login. So while configuring Moodle, you should be setting up your admin user ID password which I have done already. So I'm directly setting it out and I'm clicking on login. By the way, if you want a, a separate tutorial, how to download configure Moodle on a public IP address, please keep checking this channel. I'll be shortly posting another video on that. Right, so on the left-hand side, so this is basically the home page. On the left-hand side, I have something called dashboard. I have something called site home where I can see all the courses. I can have a calendar which is configured, which can be now also merged up with Google Calendar, Microsoft Calendar, anything. If I do have some private files, which is only visible to me, I can have that. And that all storage will go to our public site. So I'll not be uh, depending on any third party vendor for it. The final option is site administration, where all the magic happens. And from here, I suppose to create, manage, update, alter all my customizations. So let us see. Now, uh, one thing we're supposed to get it mentioned here, the time before time it loads. Now, as you can see, the GUI is very plain looking, uh, which makes it very lightweight and accessible from mobile data as well. So this is very much helpful for the participants as well. They are, they'll not be uh, having a lot of bandwidth requirement with a very less bandwidth speed, probably a 2G bandwidth speed, can be sufficient will be sufficient for it right also although we can also do a lot of customizations here i can download multiple themes but unnecessary that will make the site heavyweight so we are not doing that right 
So now coming to site administration on top of the screen, I do have multiple options here. I have got something called site administration where I can uh, add some mail server. I can have some security patches added. If I want, I can add multiple other languages so that the screen will be visible in multiple local languages also. Those all things are possible. The second tab is user, where I'm gonna add user, my learners or the teachers. Then I have something called courses, where we're gonna create courses. Now I can create multiple department, which is called category. And under each department or category, I can have courses. I can have some settings for the grades. I can have some plugins added, where I'll be defining that whether this particular one will be uh, giving you an opportunity when the participants is trying to take an assessment under your platform, it will become a full screen, no copy paste will be allowed, no right click will be allowed. So those all settings, you can do it out. Right, so we're gonna start with the courses and let's see what we're supposed to do. So add a new course is on option or I can add a new category as well. So first thing first, I'm going to add a new course. Now already I do have few categories created here. So under some of these categories or one of these categories, I'll get it created. So I'm calling this course a trial course. And I am setting the course short name. Now this course short name is supposed to be very, very unique. So TC N-I-L-D-R-I, TC Nadri probably, or I can also set it to TCN as short as better. And then as I do have multi multiple categories already created, I'm gonna choose one of the categories here and I can get it created. As I was mentioning earlier, earlier that I can create a new category also. So that will define a new department. So I'm keeping it under, for example, in information technology. Now, what is the course visibility? Will it be visible to everybody? Yes, I wanted to get it visible to everybody, but I wanted to restrict the participants to participate on this on a, uh, restriction basis that we'll discuss it a little later and then I can set up when it should start when it should end and if I am hosting this course for a very longer time or if it's an open-ended course I'll just check out the enable button beside course end date so this course will be enabled for a very long time or a lifetime then I can write the description for this course so I'm writing a very quick description here I'm saying this is a demo course i can write as big description as possible i can have all my syllabus course material introduction about the faculties everything i can have some audio videos to be added here so those all features are available here i can have a video recorded by a faculty member who is trying to take this one and i can have a video demonstration at the beginning of this course now i can add a logo for this image i mean logo for this course which will help the participants to quickly define it although it's not important it's not mandatory so i'm not doing it right away then the next important component is the course format so what i'm gonna do is i wanted to have it uh, there are a couple of formats available which is a single activity format where at a time one activity uh, will be there to engage the learner i can have a social format where uh, it will be like an interaction basis like they'll get a uh, social media kind of a look and feel about the course I can have a topic format where I can add all my individual topics and under every topic, I can have a course material, I can have a live record session or a recorded session, I can have an assignment, I can have an assessment, I can have everything. And uh, participants are supposed to complete each topic one by one. I can also define the order of the topic. I can also define one topic should be completed before going to the next topic. So those all advantage I'll be getting under the topic format. And then something is called the weekly format, which is uh, can be mapped to the timetable. So based on that timetable, I will keep on informing or uh, keeping the information about all these activities in that particular course, in that particular week. So I'm going ahead with single activity format. And then uh, what is the type of the activity? Will it be an assignment or will it be a quiz or something so that I can define? So let us go ahead and uh, define it in a topic format. So as I define the topic format, so how many maximum number of sections or how many topics I wanted to add. So this can be the chapters or uh, units in the syllabus. So by default, uh, we have five units, most of the syllabuses in most of the curriculum, five or six units. So I'm gonna set it to five. 
do i have any hidden section yes or no i can define uh, i can also define course layout whether everything going to be shown in a single page or every topic will go to a new page those all ad administrations can be done i can go to the appearance i can define like number of announcement at a same point of time so that participants don't get confused only the important one will or the recent one will be shown on the top so these advantages can be taken care of here uh, there are some advanced option which is called role renaming so uh, in this course i can i am the course creator because from this account i am creating it i can have a teacher i can have a non editing teacher i can have a guest i can have a moderator i can have any anybody add it now by default moodle uses this terminology if i wanted to change it i can also do that right so without any further ado let us go ahead and create and display this courses and let's see how it looks like so once this course has been added directly it will ask me to enroll my participants but right now we don't have any users we have to upload the users or we have to create the user then probably will come back so by the time what are you going to do we're going to click on the dashboard which is on the top of my course and then i click on the site home now so once i click on site home i'll be able to see all these categories once again all these departments in short and as we are part of information technology we're going to go inside that and i see there is a course created which is called trial course so i click on this course and i see by default five topics have been created now i have to go ahead and edit that so how do i edit once again on the right hand side top i have a gear sign i have to click on the gear sign and choose the option turn editing on so once i click on turn editing on i can change these topics i can add multiple activities on that under the topics i can change the name of this announcement as notice or notices i can edit this topics as unit 1 and i can have every possible options now for a mat timings for example i don't want the second topic so what i going to do i going to delete this topic i am realizing that i need only three topics here so let me uh, delete few couple of topics here and then i going to edit the rest of it i'll be calling it unit 2 i'll be calling it preface where i want all the participants to take it before now the ordering also can be changed as preface to be taken before unit 1 i going to keep it on top of unit 1 and under this i have to add multiple activities or resources so how do i add an activity or resource as i have turned that editing on now everything is available for me i click on add an activity or resource so initially i click on that button and then the complete options are available for me so what i going to have it here i going to have a chat window open i going to have a external tool where uh, participants are supposed to uh, watch a video or a live class or a demonstration like probably i have scheduled one zoom meeting and i wanted to come back and post the zoom meeting title here so participants don't have to check their emails or anything once they log into this uh, moodle they'll be able to find out everything so initially i can take a feedback what is the entry feedback for a course i can create a uh, glossary where uh, the all popular terminologies can be known i can have a lesson plan added for them i can also have a entry survey I can have a Wikipedia page managed here. I can create a workshop before taking the course for a very advanced course. Probably you wanted to ensure that all the fundamental or prerequisite for your course are being taken care of, so you can do that. You can have a book added to that. You can have a file which is your study material or something. So these all options are available here. Right. So we can create a assessment here or a quiz here. So we'll come back and see this quiz option. and we'll see how the assessment can be taken care but before that we wanted to create some users so let's click on cancel here and again we go back to dashboard right so now under dashboard what i supposed to do once again i go to site administration under site administration now i wanted to add my uh, students or my learners or i wanted to add some co moderator for the courses all these things i wanted to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on users 
Now, there are some options. I can uh, browse a list of users who are all available. I can do a bulk user action like changing, uh, asking everybody to reset their password, or I delete some 400, 500 students who are no longer required for this platform. Maybe they got graduated or something. I can do a individual student actions and everything. And more, mostly, I can upload a set of users. Now, this is very interesting and important here because uh, the generic size of a class is 100 plus and you don't want it to add an uh, every student individually so i'm going to show you how individual student adding looks like then we're going to come back and see the easier way of uploading user so the third option add a new user here <clears throat> so first thing first is a username and at every point of time uh, we're going to have a help window here once i click on this help window uh, if i click on this help window i'll be able to find out uh, which happens, what are the restrictions for a username and everything. So I'm gonna have a dummy test user created. So I call it test one. So now I can have multiple options. I can have a manual account. I can, for an advanced user, it's an email based registration. I can have an external database with that or from that I wanted to import all the data. If at all, I do have some tool, uh, the college administration tool, I can also, from that, I can also import that data. So all these things are available here. And uh, do I want to generate the password and notify the user? Yes, I can do that. I can connect a mail server with that. And once the account is created, students will, or the learners will get an email automatically. Now, I can define a password manually here. Uh, I'm going to have a password set here for a time being. And if I want to see what I have seen, I'll click on this I button, I symbol, so that it makes it visible. And the next option is, do I want the student to change the password? Yes, most of the cases, of course, because I will be creating a same password maybe for all the students. And I don't want them to continue with the same password uh, for a security reason. So once they log in for the first time, they're supposed to change everything. Right, now also I wanted to, uh, have a first name, last name mentioned for them. The email address is supposed to be configured properly here. And then there are some other options. I can select a country, I can select a time zone, I can give a description. Uh, I can, if I do have a user picture, I can upload a user picture here, or participants will be able to do it anyways. And so this is all basically what are the factors. So I'm not adding this user manually now. Let us see how to upload multiple users at a same point of time. Right. So once again, I go to site administration and a site administration, I go to users and I see the option upload user. So I click on upload users. Now, the first thing comes into mind that what is the template? What is the format? How I supposed to upload it? So there is an example CSV given, which we can download, open it in Excel and see what is the template. And based on that, the data can be filled in. So I already have created one, so which I'm gonna uh, display it out here. So this is the template what we're supposed to use. And uh, this is the example.csv, as you see, I'm also editing the same file. <clears throat> so these are the common fields which you're gonna have it here, uh, starting with username, password, first name, last name, and email address. Uh, this is supposed to be unique and this email address is supposed to be unique. As you can see, this does not require to be very, very unique. Of course, by default, it's supposed to be unique. Right. So now what I'm going to do as I have this data already ready with me, I'm going to come back to Moodle. I click on choose file. It will give me a pop-up where I'll be adding up a private file here. So I'll go to choose file. I select the option example CSV and I'm gonna click on open. Let us upload this file and see what happens. Now it's a comma separated file. So I'll be choosing comma as a delimiter. Uh, if I do have 1000, 10,000 students to be uploaded, I wanted to preview all the rows before they get uploaded. And once this has been set up, I'm gonna click on upload users. Right, so it's showing everything is fine. There is no mismatches, otherwise, the problem will be highlighted in the status column. So that's all fine. Now, upload type, I have a lot of controls here. I can add only the new users. And 
skip the existing user may, maybe probably some of these users are already available how do i identify uh, the system will identify based on that email address if they give a different separate email address so yes everything will be treated as new so that's fine and i can also have add all and if at all there is a change in the user id please update that i can also only update the existing users also maybe their password and email id got changed the user id is unique so i going to have everything add new and update existing users second is the password if create the password and send them via email no i am not going to do that because i have already mentioned the password in the file so i am choosing the option field required in file now existing user details override with file i can do override i can leave them as it is so everything is fine i am choosing override with file existing user password yes update and force password change i can have it only for the few students who are having weak password i may not allow or may not force everybody to change their password they can do it as per their own wish i'll select none in that case and if i want everybody to change their password i'll select all as mentioned now the passwords are common most of the cases when you are bulk uploading so selecting all is very very beneficial right so can user change their uh name yes absolutely can use a delete themselves no probably so these all settings are as per our our consideration uh do i wanted to select them for bulk user action yes of course all users going to have that option or i may not see i mean i can say no i don't wanted to uh, do a bulk operation on that because maybe by mistake i could delete all these accounts as an administrator so that is fine few couple of other options here i can define which organization which institute which department the student belongs to so that later i can uh, create a quick filter and perform if i don't want nothing is mandatory here i can simply click on upload users right so <clears throat> the users have been created here so everything is fine there is no problem so now my users have been created so i can see like i was trying to update uh, four or five users four users rather and all four users are updated uh, or rather created any users are having weak password no no error so everything is fine right now these students i can manually enroll them into my course or i can have a automatic enrollment so how do i do that so again for that purpose i go to site administration i go to courses and i get to see manage courses and categories the first option so i click on manage courses and categories so here i do have multiple courses already been created here i go to the course information technology uh, the category information technology and i can also see some option here called trial courses i can go ahead and click on this edit button to get it edited and i can figure out how i want my participants to appear for that so once i am in this edit option i go to participants as i see there are no participants available as of now so i wanted to set up enrollment option for them right so otherwise i can directly enroll the users here right so now what again we going to go back to the dashboard we're going to go to the site home we're going to go to the course the category i going to go inside the trial course and i can keep on adding that users here as i was mentioning it earlier right all right so now uh, <clears throat> if i once again wanted to change the enrollment options here i can go once again to the right hand side i'll get to see once again the uh, gear symbol and i can click on enrollment methods so now the interesting part here is uh, now it is only manual enrollment where as a educator i supposed to enroll my students by myself for a security purpose you can have that but if you feel that it's a very open ended course anybody is allowed to take it out and you are not really bothered who is joining the course so you can also set something called self enrollment here 
So enabling self-enrollment is very easy. I click on this I symbol once again, and I get to see that this I symbol is activated, and now students can enroll themselves by default. Right. So let me go back to the course once again. I can navigate to any level in the hierarchy. So I'll go to the course once again, and under preface this time I'm gonna add one activity, and I'm gonna add one activity which is a quiz. So let me click on add activity or resources. I'm gonna select one quiz, and I click on add. Now, I first thing first for the quiz. Let me give a name. So I'll call it a trial quiz. What is the description? So all this information, what you wanted to tell to the participants before starting the quiz, can be written here, like the number of questions, duration, whether you have a negative marking or not. So all everything can be given. So I say there are minus one negative marking for every two wrong answer. Right. <clears throat> Next, we're going to set for the timing. I can say like when the course is actually starting, when the uh, test will be actually uh, ending. So I say, uh, for example, uh, it will be starting on 17th of May. It will start at probably 10 o'clock in the morning. And it will be finishing it at once again 17 by <clears throat> 12 of 12 afternoon and during this time so during the, of this two hours of time i'm gonna have 30 minutes of that test so the time limit for the test is what is the duration of the test and open quiz and close quizzes during what time the participants wants to take the test or you are allowing the participants to take the test when the time is completed what will happen uh, all the student participants who are taking it Still, that can be submitted as and when the time ends, when it's 12 in the afternoon. Uh, can you, do you want it to give them a grace period? Yes, define possible. Uh, can you want it, uh, if at all they started the test, but it is crossing 12, do you want them to keep on trying for another 30 minutes? So everything can be given. All these possibilities are here. Now, how you wanted to grade that? Uh, do you want them to perform unlimited type Unlimited items or a single attempt or a double attempt. If I say two attempts minimum, then for that I can also have four options. I want to take the highest or the average or the first or the last attempt score, whichever is possible. So I'm gonna take the average for matter of example here. Now, how the questions will gonna behave here? Do you want them to give uh, shuffle the question? Yes, of course. Every question should be shuffled on. Uh, do you want them to give a deferred feedback? That, that means at the end of the test, they'll be able to get uh, all the answers. Yes, that is possible. Or you can keep it as a CAT model, common aptitude test, where based on their correct and wrong answer, new set of questions can be loaded. So that is possible here. Furthermore, what are the review options when they finish the test? Do they want it to see their attempt, which one is the correct answer, wrong answer? Maybe not. Immediately after that, when the uh, quiz is completed, you want them to see the correct answer because probably by that time, uh, there is a possibility that the correct answers can be circulated and uh, the modesty of the test can be hampered. So these all options are here. Right, I can have multiple restrictions also. I can have one password set uh, at the time of the test, you wanted to share that password to a as an SMS to the students or a WhatsApp text, uh, or you may want them to take it from a specific IP address range. So all those details I can get it added here. Now, once this has been done, let's click on save and display. Now the test is created, but right now we don't have any questions added to that. Now adding a questions, there are multiple options. I can edit or edit the quiz and add individual questions, which is not a very recommended thing. Most of the cases, we wanted to have a bulk upload on the questions as well. So if I have 500 questions, I can upload all the questions at the same point of time. And there are a few couple of advanced features as well. Let me go ahead and show those to you. So I click on edit quiz. 
Now, as I click on edit quiz, I can see that I can add multiple quizzes, multiple options here. I can add a new question. I can get a question from a question bank or set of question from a question bank, or I can select a set of random questions from a given question bank. For example, I have 500 questions out of that only 30 I wanted to randomly select. So further, what happens? Every student, uh, there's a high possibility that they will get a different set of questions and it can be very well handled. Now, just for a matter of example, let's see how to add a new question here. So as I click on add a new question, I can have a multiple choice. I can have a true false. I can have a matching type question. I can have a short answer. I can have a numeric answer question. I can have an essay type question. By the way, except the essay type, all the other questions can be automatically evaluated. The essay type is only manual grading. There are some advanced type of questions as well, where I can have a drag and drop kind of an interactive test. I can also have an embedded answer like fill in the blanks. I can also have a uh, missing word kind of a question. I can have all sort of advanced questions. And as in the beginning I was discussing, if I add one plug in here, I'll be able to get the programming questions also, or an English writing test also, where only it will be evaluated on grammar basis. Right, so now let us go ahead and see how to add a question bank and how I supposed to administer that. So for that, I wanted to again come back to the quiz and again, I'm gonna go to the gear symbol. Here in the gear symbol, I'm gonna see one option which is called question bank and then I can directly go to import. So once I go to import, I can see there are multiple options here for an import. What are the file format? If I once again wanted to know, I'll click on this help button and it will direct me to a different page where the complete help will be displayed. I can do that. But for a matter of fact, I wanted to, I have already created one question bank here, which I would like to get it displayed to all of you. Right. So this is one question bank, what we have already. And as you can see, this is very, very easy, fundamental type question. So the first line is the question, then any number of option is fine. Only matter of fact is this all supposed to be uppercase followed by a full stop. There is a space mandatory and then I have to write the option. The correct answer should be written as answer and which option is a correct option that I have to specify here. And this way I can have a number of questions loaded. So as you can see, this is a very intuitive and very, very easy format to upload questions. Right, so let me choose ICANN format because that was an ICANN format. And then I go to general, I wanted to upload my question. So here also I can have multiple categories of the question bank. Uh, say for example, this is for the trial quiz because under the uh, quotes PCN, I might have multiple quiz and I don't want it to mix up the questions for the quiz and every quiz I wanted to have a separate question bank and a separate question bank category will be created by default. For example, trial quiz, right? Next, do you want to get the category from the file? So this is the category. No, I don't want to get the category. Error, if there is a mismatch or there is a problem with the question, then it will stop automatically. And uh, I wanted to choose the question bank file now. So once again, the same option, I click on choose a file. It will get me a private file editing option. I'll go to my option and I'll have my question bank set up. It's supposed to be in a .txt format. And then I click on open. So the file is loaded now. I'll upload this file. Once the file is uploaded, I'll click on import. And immediately it will show how many questions have been added successfully. By default, I know there are four questions and all four questions are added successfully here. So now my question rank importing, importing is successful. I don't have any problem. I just click on continue. Right. Now let me go back to the quiz once again and add this question bank or add the questions from the quiz. So once again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the quiz, which is a trial quiz here. And then I'm going to go to edit quiz. And I would like to add the question from this quiz. So now let me see two options here, adding a question from a question bank and adding a random question. So first thing from a question bank, how are you going to do it? If I click on that option, I'll be able to find out the category of the quiz, the question bank. And if I 
select all questions every single questions will be added here and every participants will be able to see the same question in a different order of course but they will be all of them will get four same question now to make the things little more interesting what moodle also support is i'm going to click on add and i'm going to select a random question so i wanted to get the question from this trial quiz question bank i wanted to add how many questions i wanted to add two random questions out of four now you understand if this is 400 i can go as higher as possible maximum 100 question for quiz can be added randomly so out of four i am i wanted to add two random questions and that's pretty much it i'll say add random question so now i'll be able to see that there are two questions which will be loaded by random for every single participant now for every question i can set how much marks i wanted to allocate so maybe for the first one i wanted to give 10 marks for the second question i wanted to give only 5 marks and this test will be for 15 marks in total now most of the cases our gradation system is out of 50 out of 70 out of 100 something i can go ahead and mention 100 here also so what will happen if at all this one question is right that means the participants get 10 out of 15 that will be automatically scaled up out of 100 here so all these things will be taken care in moodle right so the question has been added the participants have been loaded and that's all i can just inform the students to come forward and take the courses here so we can directly take a look into the course administration or from the participants point of view but again that's going to be same once again logging in clicking on the uh, course category clicking on the course taking the assessments and all now once again i wanted to show you the course page so now under the course page i have a preface category preface topic under that i have a trial quiz so that's pretty much it now how to see the reports because this test is not been taken by any participant now because we have just created that but for a matter of fact i do have already created some assignments uh, which have been regularly been used so we're gonna go ahead and check that option here so let me go to this course and we can see there are a lot of uh, assessments have been conducted here so let me go ahead and select the first one and i can see 143 attempts are being done now the attempt is not equal to the participants maybe uh, there are two attempts allowed and some of the participants have attempted it for two times so that is also possible i'm just going to show you how to refine that part right so once i click on the attempts i'll be able to see every information here right and i can see the attempts from all users all participants and everything uh, I can have an option show at most one finished attempt per user. I'll click on that checkbox. And I can also, as by default, I set for this particular quiz, I said I wanted to take the highest grade. If they attempt twice, I wanted to take the highest out of these two attempts. So it is showing the highest grade only. And I click on show report. So once I get to see the report here, for each and every participant, what is the score they got it? for which question they went right which question they went wrong i can see everything if i wanted to see for each and every participant i can click on review attempt and i can see which question were correct which was wrong and as you see i have uh, given the correct answers also now at the test is completed now they can come back and see the correct answers right so once that has been done I can also download this report in multiple different format. I can download in CSV file. I can do it in XML file, uh, Excel file. I'm sorry. I can do it in a PDF format and publish the report. And whichever format suits my administration, I can download in that particular option. So that is the complete tool, friends, about this particular portal. Once again, we discussed Moodle today and we learned how to handle an lms which is open source which is customizable and how to conduct an assessment also in that thank you once again everybody thank you for joining in uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe this to my channel and uh, please share the video so that many of our other colleagues who are into the same field can get benefited thank you have a nice day